I am you. I would like to ask everybody to close your eyes, also the people watching on the live stream. Um, I can't see anything right now, so I have no way of making sure that you just close your eyes. And you have neither because you just closed your eyes. So um, close your eyes and try to imagine my words as vividly as you possibly can. You are in a factory. There's not much light. You're surrounded by concrete walls. It's hot, noisy, dirty. You're sitting at an old table. Right in front of you, a pair of jeans and an old sewing machine. When you look up, you see rows of other kids working. The girl in front of you turns around and tries to ask you a question. At that moment, the boss appears. No talking! You mind your own business again. You watch at your hands, your fingers. There's pain in your fingers. Your fingers hurt because you have been doing the same repetitive movement for 10 hours on end. You want to slow down a bit because of the pain. At that moment, the boss appears again. Faster! And he threatens to fire you if you can't keep up the pace. Now please, Open your eyes. This is the life of thousands of kids today. The clothes we buy have a direct or indirect negative effect on the lives of others. The underwear that touches your skin right now. I want to do something about this, and I think so sh you should too. But how can we convince ourselves to do the right thing for others, for people that are far away, if we already have a hard time being perceptive to the people we love very close by? I mean, I try to understand my girlfriend every day, and I'm already having a hard time. Sorry, babe. Um, that's because most people are other people. And most of our problems are caused or endured by people you will never see or feel or meet. The one skill all human beings have to solve this issue is called empathy. Empathy is a bit like your belly button. Pretty much everybody has one, but not many people use it every day. The problem with your empathy is that it has limits. Its limits are defined by the boundaries of your personal life. So it's really hard to identify with that poor girl in India, because you are rich and you live in the Netherlands. Is there a way? Is there a way we could educate people to feel more empathy for people far away. To answer this question, together with a group, and I got to say this, of very bright students, we started inventing a new learning method called immersive learning. To truly have the possibility to be somebody else by having a outer body experience in virtual reality. It's the first learning method driven by virtual glasses and it puts you right into the life of that young boy or girl in that hot, noisy, dirty factory. Because I believe you will only stop buying clothes that are far too cheap if you had the opportunity to feel how it is to make them. So, how does this work? Let's have a little look. First, you need glasses, of course, and you need a normal computer. So when you move your head, it should move in virtual reality as well. So we have to design all of this incredibly precisely. 
And that's just what you see. You can also interact with the world around you just by moving. So in this case, if you watch to, uh, at the girl for more than two seconds, that triggers the event of the boss walking in. Audio is also made in 3D, of course. So if something happens on the left, you will hear it on the left. The ability to move in space and to interact with the world around you has a really big effect on the immersion of it and your memory. It's like you lift something yourself. 40 years ago, if you wanted to learn something about the universe, you could read a book. Nowadays, uh, we can watch great movies about the universe. And if you're lucky, you can find some interactive, gamified website with videos on it. With this, you can be in space. So we don't have to listen to André Kuipers anymore. We can be him. How cool is that? So with this, we can design pretty much every experience that you can think of right now. But for today, I would like to focus on a very special one. The one where you can learn from being somebody else. And let me explain to you why I think this is so important. Every day, I try to study how people learn from each other. Because when people learn from each other, we can basically improve life. And I've come to the conviction that empathy is the most advanced of all human communication skills. Empathy is the ability to view life through somebody else's eyes, through somebody else's perspective. And by doing that, understanding their needs, their concerns, and even their emotional state. If you understand somebody's emotional state, you can adapt your behavior to it. We develop empathy just you know, by living life, uh, watching things that happen, listening to stories from others, uh, watching movies, reading great books, and in training situations, for example, by role-playing. It's been said about empathy that it can't be taught, but that it can be caught. So immersive learning is going to take this to the next level, because with it, you can actually be somebody else. Um, when we feel connected to others, Egoism dissipates. And it's a proven fact that people are far more willing and able to help each other if they can identify with them. I believe it's really hard to close your eyes for somebody else if you have a first-person perspective memory of that person's life. So, would an experience like that change your behavior. Would you vote differently, already knowing your life in an elderly home? How would you experience your own city as a minority? Uh, in this case, many teachers in the audience, how does actually an overcrowded classroom feel? How long would you endure the life of a chicken in a small battery cage? Life in a wheelchair, you might as well be a woman. It could save your marriage. Older people will tell you that wisdom is the sum of experience. And there was this great guy called Einstein who said, learning is experience. Everything else is just information. So why are we still, you know, overloading people with information? in our universities, companies, schools, by advertising. Giving somebody information, even in a good way, is something completely different than giving somebody an experience. Giving somebody the ability to, to understand something and how it feels. Immersive learning is amazingly good in building up memories. People that tried it before said, it was like they were in a different place, or in a different person. Basically, it works like a 3D memory printer for your brain. 
and with the technology on a scale that potentially could reach millions. This is becoming a commodity. I think that is exactly what we need. If we want to solve globalized issues by using education, issues like the way we treat others, the way we treat nature, kids, animals, and the way we behave ourselves. So that's the idea of immersive learning. Now let's see how you would apply it and how far we can go. Many people during our research thought it was a good idea to have, for example, preemptive car accident training. Why not? And um, the, the people that had an accident even thought it was a good idea to make that mandatory before you get your driver's license. But I'm particularly interested in what we can learn from being somebody else. So I have a question for you. And please answer with yes. If you think it's a yes, raise your hand. And it's a no, just you know, keep it where it is. Um, do you think, do you think it's a good idea to make people experience how it feels like to be bullied? Have a look around. So that's not a 100% score. There's a difference of opinion on this, on how to apply it. I asked a friend of mine who's a father, and he told me the following thing. He said, look, um, I would only make my child endure an experience if I'm exactly sure what they learn from it. Because as a parent, obviously, I want to shield my children from possibly bad experiences. So when is an immersion good? When can we apply it in terms of age, psychologically, maybe even morally? Um, that ultimately became the question during our quest. Not how you can learn from experience, but what we need to do to make sure you learn what we want you to learn from it. And we found out in our experiments, there are three important things to address when you design an immersion for experiential learning. The first one, focus. If you see something on the left, you can't see something on the... Thank you. Because you can move freely in 3D, I need a way to make you focus, both spatially and also psychologically. So um, we tried, we borrowed a tried and tested concept of the gaming industry. We added a voice. A voice that is very near to you and that shows you things to do, uh, where to look at, with what to interact with. And this voice will ask you questions that will play with your conscience during the experience. For example, in this case, about your shopping behavior. The second one, identification. In order to empathize, it's very important you can identify with the subject as much as possible. So we have to make this as personal as possible. So ask yourself the following thing. I mean, if you're walking alone, lying in bed, you know, driving the car, when you listen to yourself, when you listen to your conscience, is that, does it sound male or female? We ask exactly the same thing at the beginning of the experience and change your voice accordingly. It's very interesting, by the way, if you are female and you have a male inner voice, for example, but I think that's a whole different topic for another TED Talk. So, uh, oh, I forgot one. We also ask you if you have brothers or sisters. And then we ask you to imagine that the girl in front of you is your sister. The human mind is very capable of using imagination in virtual reality as well. Third and last one, reflection. It's very important that we ask reflective questions to help you process whose life you lived, what happened. So in this case, we ask you, for example, what clothes you plan to buy in the near future. 
if you plan to buy jeans, for example, it's jeans you will see in virtual reality, it's jeans on the table, and it's jeans that will go through your hands while working on the sewing machine. All in order because I want you to call on the memory of and your empathy for the sweatshop worker the next time you are in a real shop again and looking at jeans. Um, by the way, women are a lot faster in answering that question about when, what clothes to buy in the near future. Um, so, finally, focus, identification, and reflection. If you noticed, I used all three of them on you as an audience today as well. I made you focus, I gave you the opportunity to identify, and I'm going to leave you with a final reflective question. I, I try to be you. I try to be you for weeks preparing this talk in, in order to understand how to explain the concept of immersive learning to you. All to give you hope for the incredibly bright future of learning, people, and technology. So, my final question is, from whose perspective would you like to learn? I felt lovely being you. Now, who would you like to be? Thank you. <laughs>